This video is meant to help you better understand your new diagnosis of colon cancer and what you can expect as part of the surgical treatment of it. What is colon cancer? The colon, also called the large intestine or large bowel, is part of your digestive system. It is a tube-shaped organ in your abdomen that connects your small intestine to your rectum and measures about 1.5 meters, or 5 feet, in length. The major function of the colon is to absorb water from the stool to change its consistency from liquid to solid. Most people will, at some point, have colon polyps, growths of normal colon tissue that are not cancerous. In some people, these polyps may transform into colon cancer over the course of many years. About 15% of colon cancers are due to inherited genetic disorders, while the remainder are largely due to environmental exposure and other factors outside of your control. Colon cancer can also spread beyond the colon to other organs like the liver or lungs. Cancer cells can travel to different areas of the body through the bloodstream. But one of the first places that colon cancer spreads is the lymph nodes around the tumor. If these lymph nodes contain cancer cells, it can be a sign that the cancer has spread beyond the colon. For most people, the best way to treat colon cancer is with a surgical operation to remove the tumor and the affected area of the colon before the operation can be performed. Additional tests must be conducted. You will have several routine blood tests performed before your operation to ensure that you are healthy enough to undergo surgery. You will have undergone an endoscopy to confirm the location of your tumor. Sometimes this will be repeated by your surgeon prior to your operation to confirm the location of the tumor. You will undergo a CT scan of your chest and abdomen to assess whether or not there has been any spread from your colon to other organs like your liver or lungs. There are also some things that you can do before your operation to improve your recovery. One of the best things you can do to improve your health and speed your recovery after surgery is to stop smoking. The more smoke-free time before your operation, the better your recovery will be. Talk to your family physician or surgeon if you would like to discuss smoking cessation aids. Properly managing and treating any health conditions you might have will greatly improve your recovery. Your surgical team will often request the assistance of a medical team to ensure that your medical conditions are well addressed prior to your operation. Undergoing surgery is a bit like running a marathon, so training your body for the stress of the operation is important. Everyone's recovery can be improved through exercise in the weeks leading up to the operation. Some patients may be referred to a prehabilitation program in which they will see a psychologist, physiotherapist, and registered dietitian to help them prepare for their operation. If your cancer is located in the right side of the colon, you will likely be recommended to receive a right hemicolectomy, in which that part of the colon is removed. In a right hemicolectomy, you will lie on your back on the operating table, and your anesthesiologist will induce general anesthesia. Once you are asleep, a breathing tube will be placed in your throat, and a drainage tube will be placed into your bladder to monitor how much urine you are producing during the procedure. This may be removed before you wake up, but may also be left in for one or two days. In almost all cases, this operation is performed through minimally invasive surgery also called laparoscopic surgery, or keyhole surgery. Using this technique decreases your risk of infection and your level of pain after the operation. If you receive laparoscopic surgery, you will have one incision around your navel or belly button, two additional small incisions on the left side of your abdomen, and a larger incision above your pubic bone. For some patients, it is safer to perform this operation through a traditional, open incision. If this is the case, you may have an increased risk of infection and require a longer stay in the hospital after the operation. Your surgeon will discuss which method is most appropriate for you. 
If you are undergoing a laparoscopic right hemicolectomy, your surgeon will inflate your abdomen with carbon dioxide gas to create space to conduct the operation. They will then insert a camera, called a laparoscope, into your abdomen that will allow the surgeon to see throughout the procedure. The surgeon will then remove the segment of colon with the tumor, disconnecting it from the rest of your colon. The surgeon will also remove the lymph nodes around the tumor so that they can be tested for the presence of cancer cells. If cancer cells are found in these lymph nodes, you may require chemotherapy. Once the tumor is removed, the end of the healthy colon is connected to the end of the healthy small intestine so that your gastrointestinal tract is once again a continuous tube. Like any operation, there are risks when having this surgery. There is a small chance of infection at the surgical incision and a small chance of bleeding during the operation. There is also a small chance of a leak from the connection between the colon and small intestine. If this occurs, you will need intravenous antibiotics and may require an additional procedure or operation, depending on the severity of the leak. Most patients who have had a right hemicolectomy will recover for one to two days in hospital or several weeks at home. While you are in the hospital, any pain that you have will be managed using medication that is injected or taken as pills, depending on your level of nausea. Your diet after the operation is completely dependent on your appetite. You can start to eat full meals starting on the day after surgery if you want to though your surgical team may recommend that you start with fluids only and slowly work up to solid food. Either way, there is no risk of damage to the colon. One of the most important things you can do to help speed your recovery is to start moving around on the day after your operation. This includes getting out of bed, walking to the washroom to use the toilet, and walking around the hospital unit or hospital halls. Although you will go home two to three days after your surgery, you will continue to recover for a few months. You should not require narcotic pain medication beyond the first few days after the operation. Usually over-the-counter medications, like Tylenol or Advil, are sufficient for any lingering discomfort. If you have pain that is not controlled with these medications, it may be a sign that you are suffering from a complication and you should return to the hospital. Once your pain is manageable with over-the-counter medications and you feel comfortable doing so, you may safely return to working and driving. Most patients return to normal activities within three to four weeks. You can start doing regular cardiovascular exercise one week after your operation, but you should avoid lifting anything heavier than 10 to 15 pounds or five to seven kilograms for four weeks. After that, you can slowly work towards heavier lifting. Just remember to start low and go slow. Most patients will experience no noticeable difference in their bowel habits in the long term. But in the first six months after your operation, you may have more frequent bowel movements, usually one to two more per day than usual. Four, to six weeks after your surgery, you will return to the surgery clinic so that the surgical team can assess your recovery and discuss the results of the tests of your tumor. Certain results may mean that you require additional treatment after surgery, like chemotherapy. Your surgeon will refer you to a chemotherapy specialist if they think you may benefit from additional treatment. We understand that this is a very difficult and frightening time for you, but it is important to know that your surgical team is always ready to help you and that they want to ensure that you can continue living a healthy and happy life for as long as possible. Don't hesitate to reach out to your surgical team, family doctor, or other medical specialists if you have any questions or concerns about your treatment plan.